Well, three Russian cosmonauts have docked at the International Space Station in a mission that continues a 20-year shared Russian-US presence in orbit. That's despite tensions over Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The three Russians arrived wearing yellow in solidarity with Ukraine. Joining me now live is astrophysicist and cosmologist at ANU, Brad Tucker. Brad, good to see you. Thanks very much yep. for joining us this afternoon. A very deliberate show of yellow by these three men. Uh, does it show, I guess, that the conflict on the ground doesn't necessarily translate into space? Well, yeah, that, that's what a lot of people are hoping this message means. Uh, you know, so, so for background, when the cosmonauts dress, they have various suits underneath. Generally, it is blue, very similar to the American one. Occasionally, it's white. Uh, they've essentially have never worn this yellow one. Uh, and clearly, obviously, people know the, you know, the situation on the ground. And given the way the uniform works, a lot of people are thinking and potentially hoping this is a sign of not just solidarity, but trying to, yes, say that, you know, we are having conflicts. There has been tension between these two groups, but hopefully they can stymie it. Because it is at least worth noting one of the cosmonauts is originally from Latvia, uh, who then uh, also had Russian citizenship and joined the, the ranks of the Russian space agency, Roscosmos. So there's a hope that, yeah, that maybe they can happen. Because during this whole time, there have been cosmonauts and Americans uh, and a German uh, astronaut all on board the space station working together. So this is not a unique thing that they've had to train and work and spend years together with. So hopefully this is the sign uh, of some, some future calm and peace in particular in the growing tensions in space related to this conflict. Well, this was a, a joint mission between Russia and the US. Can you take us through the importance of the mission itself? Yeah, you know, they, they've been doing, as you said, these joint missions for, for 20 years. Uh, and even though there is an American side kind of at the space station and a Russian side of the space station, uh, both of the equipment and experiments are designed to go together. Now, Russia two weeks ago announced it wouldn't do any joint experiments with Germany because there's a German astronaut on board. But there's a basic maintenance and operations that has to happen generally, and that requires spacewalks. And these astronauts and cosmonauts train to do these spacewalks together. And, you know, it, it quite literally, their lives rely on trusting this other person. Um, in fact, we're also expecting in the next week and a half or so, uh, one of the current crew, which makes up of two cosmonauts and an American astronaut, to come down now that three astronaut uh, cosmonauts have gone up. They kind of rotate shifts there. So they have, again, been working for the past six months. In fact, two of them have been working together for the past year on these joint activities. So this is doing amazing science for not just the U.S. and not just Russia, but everyone. The, the data, the information, and the operation is designed to go together. So uh, there's been a bit of a worry that there's been this growing tension from the ground kind of applied to the conflict in space potentially, but this may be a growing sign that they're trying to find ways to work around that. Well, it's interesting, the European Space Agency has taken a different tack here. The, they've actually suspended their mission as part of a joint project with Russia. How big of an impact will this have on Europe's, Europe's space program? Yeah, you know, because this is essentially in uh, retaliation to sanctions Russia has applied on, on Europe. Russia, a week and a half ago, pulled all of their people out of the European spaceport in French Guiana, uh, and they uh, Russia banned uh, a British satellite company from launching on one of their rockets, even though they've done it previous times. And the big hanging thread here is what is going to happen to ExoMars? This is a mission between Europe and Russia. They have both built components of it. Uh, the rover, as you see here, called the Rosalind Franklin rover, was actually originally scheduled to go to Mars in June 2020. This was when uh, NASA and China sent their rovers as well. It missed that launch because of COVID lockdowns. Now, the way Earth and Mars work is they are going around the sun at different speeds because of their, their distance from the sun and their orbits. Therefore, they essentially only are kind of on the same side of the sun uh, every two years or so. So about every 25 to 26 months is when we have what we call launch windows. That makes it the shortest trip possible, still six months, but shortest trip possible between Earth and Mars. 
Now, the next one after July 2020 is September 2022. But now that they've indefinitely suspended this mission and are looking at other ways of doing it without Russia, they will clearly miss that window, meaning the next launch window is the end of 2024. But they still are going to have to then rebuild parts that the Russians have had, redesign parts of the mission. And so they may not even make the 2024 deadline slipping into 2027. So this wow. can really have, you know, a, ma a major impact from both COVID and now this conflict going from getting there in 2020 to potentially not even till the later part of 2027. So, you know, almost a decade delay because of this. So this is a really big decision that they're making. Yeah, sounds like it's going to be a bigger mission than the yeah. original mission now That's to right. uh, get that ready in time.